Write every day. Whether you're a new writer or a writer who's been writing for 25 years, you've probably heard this advice hundreds of times. And if you go into the writing social media sphere, you can see this repeated again and again and again. And I don't know if I agree with this idea, but I do agree with the sentiment that you need to develop a habit of writing. Welcome to How to Write Good. I am your host, Daniel Poppy. You can find out more about me at danielpoppy.com. If it is your first time here, How to Write Good is a writing podcast that seeks to find principles and advice that can be applied across a broad range of writing situations. If you've been here before, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button below, and share. So we all have a lot of stuff going on, and sometimes we feel too busy to write, and that's completely understandable. Sometimes you get to the end of the day, and you can barely keep your eyes open, or you just don't have the brain power to pick up a pen and start writing. And if you do start writing at that point of time during the day, when you feel completely exhausted and all you want to do is sit in front of the TV, it is often the case that you will feel like your writing is trash, which it probably is, and that's okay. So there are instances in our lives where we can pass up on writing for that specific day. Most of the time, we actually have time. Uh, Most of the time, we have the energy, we have the time. We could block out 15 minutes or a half an hour or maybe even an hour of writing, and we could sit down and get some writing done to develop that skill of writing. But even if you have time and even if you have energy, you probably notice a couple things that happen when you try to sit down to write every single day or pretty much every single day. You find that you don't actually want to. You find that you are extremely distracted when you sit down to write or you suddenly find yourself tired, or you think to yourself, you know, I just don't feel inspired today. And this creates, I don't know if you'd call it a vicious cycle, but it creates a cycle that you've probably gone through yourself. You think of doing something. In this particular case, it is writing. You want to write. You want to develop a habit of writing so that you can get better at writing. So you say, hey, I'm going to write an hour a day. And you plan to write an hour a day, or maybe you don't bite off that much, but you plan to write a half an hour or even just 15 minutes. And you say, yes, every single day I'm going to do this. I'm not going to miss any day ever. I'm going to do this. I'm going to develop the habit of writing. And someday I'm not even going to think about writing. I'm going to be able to write really well because I practiced it so much. And I'm not going to have to get into that mood for writing. And what happens is you sit down in the first couple of days, everything goes well. And then the fourth day, you know, you're doing fine. What you're writing isn't good, but you're still writing the amount you need to. The fifth day, it's a little bit harder. The sixth day, you want to gouge your eyes out. The seventh day, you look at your piece of paper or your computer if you write on the computer and you decide, meh, I'm just going to take a break. And then the eighth day, you take another break. And the ninth through twelfth day, you take a few more breaks. The 13th day, you do write because you feel guilty and you're afraid that if you don't write on the 13th, it'll be bad luck and something down the line will happen that'll be bad. And then on the 14th through 400th day, you don't even think about writing. It doesn't come to your mind at all. And you failed at developing the habit. Now, it's a bit dramatic how I presented it here, but this has happened to me again and again and again. And it's very subtle in how it happens because by the 15th day or by the 5th or maybe even by the 3rd day, sometimes by the 2nd day of trying to develop a habit, I forget about the habit completely and go on with my life as if I didn't even try to develop that habit. Now, if you feel bad about this, don't. Because this is a normal thing everyone goes through. And it is not just related to writing. The only things that I've found that are easy to develop the habits for are such things as eating, watching TV, playing video games, etc. Those things which are so stimulating that by the time you start them, you just forget about the rest of the world. I find this particularly easy with eating myself. 
But if you're trying to do something that isn't extremely stimulating, if you're trying to do something that is somewhat boring or it can be somewhat difficult, such as starting to exercise or writing, such as you might be trying to do now, it is going to be hard developing that habit. And I think that if we want to develop a habit in any area, we should look at how habits are developed. Now, if you look at how the brain works, you see that if you do certain things, your brain will have certain connections or pathways that are created to do that specific thing. And the more you do that specific thing, the more your brain gets used to doing that specific thing and the easier it is for you to do. Uh, think of it in this way. If you're trying to create a path through a woods, the first few times you go through that woods, you're not going to be able to see the path. But the more you walk on that path you're trying to create, the more definition that path will have. And eventually anyone who sees that path will be able to easily recognize it as a path. The same is true when you're trying to develop a habit. The more you do that habit, the more the path will become defined and the easier it will be for your brain to do that specific thing. The easier it will be for you to do that specific thing, even if you don't necessarily feel like you're able to do that thing well. So if you want to develop the habit of writing, and I would say if you want to develop the habit of writing, it is for you to be able to become a better writer. If you want to do that thing, you need to do that thing again and again and again and again. I can't remember which author talked about this, but there's this idea of the 10,000 hour rule where you do not become an expert in something until you've done that thing for 10,000 hours. The time it takes to become a competent writer might take 10,000 hours, but once you have gotten to the point where you are able to write on that level, that writing isn't suddenly going to go away. You put in the time, whether you take a big break from writing or not, those neural networks are probably not going to go away. They might get weaker over time, they might fade, they might, if you will, get overgrown and be harder to deal with when you go back to them, but it is probably not going to go away, especially if you put in those 10,000 hours. Now this is the big picture of developing your writing. And when we look at it, it takes about five years working 40 hours a week to get to that 10,000 hour mark. So realize that to become an expert in anything takes a significant amount of time. It takes tons of time. It takes tons of effort. But don't worry. I don't think that you need to become an expert to develop a habit of writing. And I don't even think you need to be an expert writer to write a book that people will enjoy or that a publisher might want to publish. The reason I am talking about habits on this level and the reason I'm talking about the 10,000 hours it takes to become an expert is so that you can see the basic building blocks of what gets you to the point of building the habit of writing. Now here are five tips that I think you can use to actually develop that habit of writing. These are five tips you can take, you can apply in your daily writing and these can bring you to the point where that writing becomes something you do naturally, that writing becomes something you do without thinking. Instead of having to force yourself to sit down and write, I think these will help you get to that point where you don't have to force yourself to sit down and write, but you'll just think, oh, it is my time to write, and I enjoy writing, so I'm going to go and do it. My first tip is that you should write short. You should write super short. You should think of writing something that is short and write even shorter. The reason why I say this is because oftentimes when we want to develop habits, we start with something that is very difficult to do. But one of the main goals of sitting down and writing to develop a habit is actually getting in the habit of doing that thing every single day or almost every single day. If you were going to learn anything, you wouldn't start out with the hardest thing in that specific discipline. You would start out with something easy and you would work your way up to something more and more difficult. If you wanted to learn how to repair an engine, you would not start with the most complex engine you could find. You'd probably start with a smaller engine. You'd learn the basics of fixing that smaller engine and then you'd slowly work your way up to more and more complex things. And this is how we learn pretty much anything. We start with something easy and then we build up to something hard. Now you might be thinking, but I'm good enough that I can write 
longer things. I can write things that are far more complex than the average person. But when you write anything longer, when you write a whole book or you write a whole series of books, most writers are going to tell you that they write those over a period of time and they actually have to write it day in and day out, sometimes over years. Uh, for me, I've written a book over five years and I was not necessarily working on the book every single day, but I did put in a significant amount of time every single week. That is a very, very long time to work on something and writing is something that you need a lot of discipline to do, not necessarily because it's something that's going to kill you or not necessarily because it's something that's going to wreck your body or make you extremely tired, but because it's something that you need the discipline to do day in and day out. So when you are developing that habit of writing every single day, make it short so that it's not something daunting that you have to walk into because right now you are just trying to lay that good path. You're not trying to run a marathon on it. My second tip is that you should time yourself. I say that you should time yourself because one thing that gets in the way of people not being able to write every single day or having writer's block or different things like that is that they try to fit as much writing into one day as possible. As I said in my last tip, writing is a marathon. Writing is a super marathon or an ultra marathon or whatever they're called. Writing is a marathon, it's not a sprint. It's something that can take you a decade in some cases. Sometimes it takes a week to write a book. Sometimes it takes 10 years or even more. Sometimes you never even finish that book. And what you do when you time yourself is you put a limit on your writing. You subconsciously tell yourself or you tell your subconscious that you can only write this amount of time and will have tomorrow to write more. This also stops you from taking all your ideas one day and throwing them on the paper. Because in a lot of cases, you need those ideas to germinate overnight so that you have more ideas to work with. My third tip is that you should expect to only finish a paragraph. This does not mean you should write short. This means that when you are writing, you are focused on a single paragraph at a time. I have another episode about the, this idea that you should write in paragraphs, and you can check it out here or down below if you want to see that or want to listen to it. Uh, but you should write in a paragraph. Instead of thinking, oh, I'm gonna write a whole chapter day, today, or instead of thinking, I'm going to write this long scene, this huge complex scene, think about writing the paragraph you're on. Forget about the other paragraphs around the one you are writing because only the paragraph you are writing at that specific time is the one you need to worry about. When you get to the end of the paragraph, you can go to the next paragraph and work on that one. But if you are specifically trying to develop the habit of writing, you need to be focused on the thing you're writing. You need to have a singular focus, and it's probably not going to come right away, but actually focusing on a single thing, the paragraph is going to help you get there faster. When you are trying to develop the habit of writing every single day, do not strive for excellence. This is my fourth tip. Do not strive for excellence. I'll say it again. Do not strive for excellence. Try to be competent. If you strive for excellence, you'll constantly be looking at what you've already written and you'll constantly say that it's trash because there is no such thing as perfect writing. By striving for competence, instead of striving for excellence, you're freeing up yourself to make mistakes in this journey of learning to write every single day. If what you wrote yesterday is trash, you can just think, well, there's certain good things about it, there's certain bad things about it, I'll move forward, I'll keep on developing what I'm doing, and I'm going to get to a point where I'm a proficient writer. This does not mean that you cannot be an excellent writer, but if you're trying to develop something like a habit of writing every single day, or writing pretty much every single day, the idea that you're going to be an excellent writer every single day is, I don't want to be mean and say that it's laughable, but that might be the actual term I should use. It might be laughable to say that you are going to be an excellent writer every single day, especially when you've just started to develop the habit of writing. My final tip is that you should do your writing in isolation. This has multiple layers. First, you should try to be alone and away from distractions as you're developing the habit of writing. Some people can write with a lot of stuff going on around them. You should try to eliminate the distractions around me. 
I realize in some cases having silence around you is a distraction, so you should find the thing that is going to allow you to zone out of the world and hone in on the writing you're actually doing. Because, like I said before, writing is a marathon. It takes a lot of time, and the more you can focus on that writing when you sit down to write, the better your writing is going to be and the less painful it's going to be to write. This idea of writing in isolation also has another idea. And this is ironic in some ways, but I think that you should try to not take the advice of other writers as you're developing the habit of writing. The reason why I say this is because I haven't met a writer that isn't extremely critical of their own work. And when you have other voices coming in and saying that you should do this or that, you suddenly look at your work and you say, well, I'm not doing that thing. There are times when you should look at the advice of other writers. I think it's good to get outside feedback, but if you are trying to develop that initial habit and get to the point where you're writing every single day with ease, I do not think you should try to be bringing in other people's advice. And again, I realize that's a bit of an ironic statement because I am giving you advice about writing. But my last piece of writing advice, like I said, do it in isolation. Do not listen to those other voices as you're writing. Just put the words down on the paper and write as you think you should write. If you enjoyed this, you're probably wondering how you can support me. Well, you can actually do two simple things. Follow the first link below to grab a copy of my book and then follow the second link and sign up for my newsletter. It's that simple. Those two things will mean the world to me and give me more time to write books and create content for you. As always, my name is Daniel Poppy, and this is How to Write Good.